That's a um, place we always heard about, and uh, I'd always wanted to uh, to go and march over hills and come and see what lies beyond. I mean, that's just in, in my nature. So uh, taking the chance to go up to the furthest point of the mainland of Shetland had always been a wish of mine, and um, I was given the opportunity. Um, it happened, happened to be my 18th birthday, but I, I got a day off and I was able to go and go right up there and just to see it. And it was a lovely uh, September's day and uh, it was quite magic. The two beaches on either side and the wee headland and, uh, and the empty houses. But it was only there for uh, a few generations because it was, it was um, seen as a good place to do the sade fishing from. And having two beaches meant you had a, a, a sheltered beach to, to, uh, to launch from. And so the laird built the houses, took families, put them there. So it has that uh, air of, of something other than permanence. However, in the middle of it, there's a Neolithic house, which is <laughs> really takes it back to the, you know, to the Stone Age, and 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 you get that uh, lovely feeling, because it's um, basically been untouched by humans, except for that short time with our said fishing. Then there's there's a lovely sort of timelessness about the place. In the minute, uh, uh, geologically, it's very interesting. There's the, some of the oldest rocks on the surface of the planet are there, so it's it's got a whole lot of history there. It's to do with the fishing and then and now. I took it to be a lifetime of a person starting young, going to going off for the first time, getting the thrill of going off in a boat. And out in the ocean, I mean, out in the ocean, you get a there's a peace and a clarity of mind that is you can't get anywhere else. It's lovely. It's, it's a it's a life of its own. Then, of course, as the as the years go on, his hard work, having to strive, and uh, up here in Shetland, there's a lot of times you're at sea when you wish you were ashore. <laughs> and then, as age overcomes him, then uh, looking back and seeing the place start to empty. The, the the lums because uh, no no, uh, no leak come at the lums and then actually leaving the place and uh, as as you come back from Fedland your face just be a climb up this hill so you you, you left you turn turn your back on Fedland and cast your eye upon the hill. <laughs> when we actually went to Fedland itself, very few of us had ever been there before. It was quite an eye-opener to see the old buildings down there in the atmosphere of the place. You could imagine people actually using the fishing boats down there and the way they would live. To sing down there, especially inside the ruins, was, was very good. It's, it actually put some meaning to the song as well, seeing where it was based. It's, it's a very little visited place. Just a, a, an aura about it. Very intriguing just to walk about and don't imagine what it must have been like, a very, very busy place at one time. What I had never realised was just Fumani crofts. There are, and there, as distinct for the, the fishing boats, I've been longing for decades to visit the place, and I'd never been to Forian Day, so I was absolutely delighted. <laughs> when we got it first, then I realised there was going to be lots of problems with pronunciation. And so I phoned up Neil and checked over my phonetic spelling swim. I think we're all very pleased with it. It's, come, it's, a, it's a very complex song in a lot of different ways, musically and emotionally, um, especially. And uh, I think the, the, result, the resultant effect is, is excellent. Everything is transient. And so uh, in the lifetime of a person, even though there can be everything and that can encompass the all of life. But it's never permanent. It comes to an end. So it's quite sad, actually. It was an idea that worked for just a time. And then times moved on and the place became, well, um, uninhabitable because the reason for being there moved on. <laughs>